Lord, you are mighty. Amen. Lord, you're mighty. 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 Lord, you're mighty
live by bread alone, but by every word that proceeded out of the mouth of God. And here to encourage us on this morning, August the 1st, 2021, is our very own pastor and founder of Words of Life Ministry of the Apostolic Faith is none other than Pastor Darian McKenna receiving by saying, Preach the word! Preach the word! Pastor McKenna. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you. It is August the 1st, 2021. Wow. You're moving on, isn't it? Amen. Amen. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Yeah. So we, we're working in this series of, of, of uh, uh, messages, and it, it is lip service, and this is part five. Amen. Amen. Lip service, and this is part five. Uh, I say I give honor to my Father, my Lord, my Savior, my Jesus. I know he may be your Jesus too, but my Jesus, my Jesus, the one that saved me, the one that delivered me, the one that provides for me, my Jesus. Hallelujah, you have to make that thing personal. Hallelujah. And I give honor to my wife. How about that? <laughs> Amen. And I say praise the Lord to all the saints. Hallelujah. That have came out on today. I say praise the Lord to all those that are in media land, in, in, uh, on YouTube or, or Facebook. I say praise the Lord to you, and I thank you for joining us on this day. We're going to continue on in our series of lip service, and this will be part five. And we're going to start reading uh, again in Matthew, and we're going to be reading from the New Living Translation. Amen? Thank you, Jesus. New Living Translation. And we are reading, we're starting at uh, Matthew 15, uh, verse 1. Some Pharisees and teachers of religious law now arrived from Jer uh, Jerusalem to see Jesus. They asked him, why do your uh, disciples disobey our age-old traditions? For they ignore our traditions of ceremony, hand-washing before they eat. Jesus replied, and why do you, by your tradition, violate the direct commandments of God? For instance, God says, honor your father and your mother. And anyone who speaks disrespectfully of father or mother must be put to death. But you say it is all right for people to say that their parents, say to their parents, sorry, I can't help you. For I have vowed to give to God what I would have given to you. In this way, you say they don't need to honor their parents. And so you counsel the word of God for the sake of your own tradition. You hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he uh, prophesied about you. For he wrote, these people honor me with their lips, but their heart are far from me. Their worship is a farce, for they teach man-made ideals as commandments from God. Then Jesus called to the crowd to come and hear. Listen, he said, and try to understand. It's not what goes into your mouth that defiles you. You are defiled by the words that come out of your mouth. The disciples came to him and asked, do you realize you offended the Pharisees by what you just said? Jesus said, Jesus replied, every plant not planted by my heavenly father will be uprooted. So ignore them. They are blind guides leading the blind. And if one blind person guides another, they will both fall into the ditch. Then Peter said unto Jesus, explain to us the parable that says people aren't defiled by what they eat. Don't you understand yet, Jesus asked, anything you eat passes through the stomach and goes into the sewer. But the words you speak come from the heart. That's what defiles you. For the heart comes 
for from the heart, for from the heart comes evil thoughts, murder, adultery, all sexual immorality, theft, lying, and slander. These are what defile you. Yeah, yeah. Eating with unwashed hands will never defile you. Father, in the name of Jesus, Father, I pray on this day, Father, that you would have your word to go out and touch the hearts of your people. Touch the heart of your manservant, God. Touch, hallelujah, each and every heart, each and every ear that hears this word, whether it be today, tomorrow, or next week, Father. In the name of Jesus, Father, make that heart conducive, God, to your word, conducive to obedience, Father. Hallelujah. Father, bring about repentance. Hallelujah. Bring God, hallelujah, uh, uh, our heart to line up with our lips, or our lips to line up with our heart, Father. Do it, Jesus. In your name we pray. In Jesus' name, amen and amen. You may be seated. So as we uh, um, uh, look back uh, um, over the parts that we are already covered we, we, we have uh, of course our first part and second part we talked about the scribes and the Pharisees the first part we talked about how the scribes hallelujah there was people who copied the word of God and their studying was was not to 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 seek and get closer to God but just to do their job we talked about the Pharisees and how the Pharisees we we we, we deemed them to be uh, 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 of the word of God, Jesus deemed them to be self-righteous, hallelujah, people, hallelujah, self, uh, to be, uh, uh, to think themselves and to believe themselves of, of a higher moral and, and character than anybody else around them. Uh, uh, we described uh, uh, them to be one that compares and do right to their own righteousness, to their own right. So they had their own scale of being right. So everything they did was right. <laughs> Jesus, we found that Jesus is the only scale and value and morality that we should be comparing ourselves to, not ourselves. We spoke about how the Pharisees uh, uh, was talking about how they transgress the hand-washing tradition. And we found that, that traditions, hallelujah, don't save a man. Tradition can't save your soul. Now, we, we, we also found that, hallelujah, that there's nothing wrong with having traditions now. And, and, and there's nothing wrong with having tradition. You can have tradition, but as long as tradition don't violate, hallelujah, the commandments of God. I mean, because you can have a tradition. We start church at every every Sunday at eleven o'clock. You know, as long as the tradition don't violate the commandments of God, as long as they don't take the place of of, of the commandments of God, don't let the tradition bind you up that man imposed upon you. Because sometimes traditions will bind you up and cause you to sin and cause you to be disobedient to the word of God. Uh, we discussed that, how, how, how the baptism has changed, amen, from, from Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Uh, it changed from being baptized in Jesus' name to Father, Son, and the Holy Ghost. We covered those things. How traditions have changed the even salvation. Uh, now last week, we spoke about how you can't buy your way into heaven. It is good that you give your time, your money, and, and speak well of Jesus and, and all these things. But all these things can't get you into heaven. We found that the only way we can get into heaven uh, is what uh, Jesus said unto them. I am the way, the truth, and the life. No man cometh unto the Father but by me, me being Jesus. And we, we, you know, all the way we can get back to where we were lost out at when we was, uh, when Adam and Eve uh, did their thing and, and 
in the Garden of Eden and sinned and got kicked out, we've been trying to get back with God, to get in that special place, to have that special relationship with him. But Jesus, told, but Jesus said, the only way you can get back there is to be born again. And you got to be born of the water and of the spirit. Matter of fact, you have to follow uh, Acts 2, 2 and 38. It tells you to repent of your sin, be baptized in Jesus' name, in water, and be filled, and be baptized, hallelujah, with the Holy Ghost, with the Spirit of God, receiving that gift. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Now, we'll pick up this week in Matthew uh, 6 and 15. It says, in this way, you have said they don't need to honor their parents. And so you cancel the word of God for the sake of your own traditions. He said, you hypocrites. Isaiah was right when he prophesied about you and wrote. These people honor me with their lips, but their heart are far from me. Hallelujah. Now, they are saying what is right the Pharisees, but they're doing what is wrong. The worship is a farce, what he said, for they teach man-made ideals as the commandments of God. You know, in verse 7, Jesus uh, uh, calls the scribes to, and the Pharisees a hypocrite. He called them a hypocrite. Now, what, uh, what exactly is a hypocrite? A person uh, who puts a, a false appearance of virtue of religion, all right? A person who acts in contradiction to his or her stated beliefs or feelings. Now, in other words, you know, that's even somebody that don't even believe in God, but they believe in something else, and they don't even act on what they believe in. You know, y'all understand what I'm saying? They won't even follow their own made up thing. I mean, that's pretty bad. <laughs> you, you make up your own religion yourself and don't even follow it yourself. It says a person who, who, who claims or, or, or pretends to have certain beliefs about what is right, but who behaves in a way that disagrees with those beliefs. Same thing what we just said. An answerer. I swear it, it says a hypocrite is an answerer, an actor that bees on stage, a pretender. Ooh. Mm. The pretenses of being what one really is not. Especially the pretense of being a better person than one really is. Maybe I need to read that again. The pretense of being what one is really not. Other words, you're acting like what you're really not. Especially the pretense of being a better person than one really is. Now that happens a lot. Hallelujah. Sometimes they say, what, what the world say, fake it until you make it. Well, you can't fake your way into heaven. And you will not make it. It's got to be done right. And ain't go one way. Hallelujah. And that's through Jesus Christ. Uh, hypocrites or, or hypocrisy is based on a Greek term, uh, 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 um, which is originally mean to give an answer. It means to give an answer. A hypocrite, uh, back in the old days of, of, of the Greek classic days, it, 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 the term means to, to be an interpreter of dreams. In other words, David, uh, uh, I mean Joseph, could have been called a hypocrite because he was an interpreter of dreams back in those days. An orator, all right, somebody to just speak, a reciter of, of, of poetry. Now we're talking back in the day. An actor. This is uh, a hypocrite. In the Bible, though, 
the more negative meanings of the word prevail. Uh, hypocrisy, it, it refers to evil, uh, uh, generally like sin. Uh, if often, it often identifies a person or somebody that's godless or, or ungodly. In the synopsis, uh, synoptic gospels, Jesus criticized uh, uh, the hypocrites for being pious in public. You know, falsely appearing good, having a, you know, falsely though, appearing to have a good morality. Falsely appearing, being pious. They were more interested in, uh, uh, in human, hallelujah, praise when they gave, hallelujah, alms, prayer, and false, hallelujah, or fasting than in the rewards of God. Let me read that again. They were more interested in human praise when they, when you know, about when they was giving alms or when they was praying and when they was fasting than the actual reward of what they was doing. Amen. You know, they could have been rewarded of God for what they, but their intentions were wrong. They had the wrong intentions. Even though they was praying, just like you be praying. Even though they was fasting, just like you be fasting. It's all about your intention. Yeah. They was doing the act of the thing. But hallelujah, thank you Jesus. It was not, hallelujah, being counted for anything. It was being counted against, hallelujah, what they was doing. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Oftentimes, uh, a, a hypocrite are, are guilty of being judgmental of, other, uh, of others' faults and ignoring their own. Being judgmental of others' faults, but ignoring their own. Matthew uh, 7, 1 and 5 says, Judge not that ye be not judged. All right, well, that starts off already pretty good, right? You, you, if you ain't judging nobody, you ain't got to worry about being judged, at least by somebody else, right? Uh, for it goes on to say, For with what judgment ye are judged, ye shall be judged. And with what measure ye meet, ye shall be measured to you again. And why beholdest thou the malt that is in thy brother's eye, but considers not the beam? That is in your own eye. Hallelujah. Uh, how will thou uh, say to thy brother, let me pull that malt, and that malt like is like a big stick, out of thine uh, uh, own eye. Well, the malt is a small stick, excuse me. Out of thy own eye. And behold, a beam that's in your own eye. Think about that thing. Thou hypocrite, is what Jesus said to them. First, cast out the beam out of thine own eye, and then uh, thou shalt be able to see clearly to cast out the mouth that's in thy brother's eye. Yeah. Before you start throwing a stone at others, do a self-check on your own self, Amen. on your own behavior, Amen. on your own lifestyle, Amen. on your own conversation. And I'm not talking about throwing an actual stone. I'm talking about throwing the stone from your mouth. I'm talking about the stone of lip service. Beating somebody down with your mouth. When you need to be lifted up yourself about the gutter and out the miry clay. You will find that Jesus often called the Pharisees hypocrites because of the conflict between their external actions and their inner attitude. That attitude of the heart or the attitude that was in the heart. Hallelujah. It, it wasn't lining up. That external action and your inner attitude. Matthew uh, uh, 7 and 15 said, Beware of false prophets which come to you in sheep clothing, but are inwardly, they are raving wolves. Hypocrites are the, fair, are the Pharisees will come to you speaking in terms that would draw your attention 
it seems right, but as Jesus says, they are speaking under the cover of sheep clothing. Truly, their heart, uh, truly in their heart, they're not looking uh, to do what they say. They're not looking to do what they say. Their objectives are not to help you, but to help themselves by deceiving you with lip service. The objective is to help themselves. The word of God says in Matthew uh, 7 16, it says, Ye shall know them by the fruit, by their fruits. Do men gather grapes of thorns or figs of, uh, of thistles? Even so, every good tree bringeth forth good fruit, but a corrupt tree bringeth forth evil fruit. Since you have been buried, with Christ, what kind of uh, uh, fruit are you bearing? Since you've been buried with Christ, what kind of fruit are you bearing? Listen, all 95 apples on that apple tree, most of the time, are not good. You might have 90, 93 of them good. You know, then you might have a couple of bad apples. But we don't chop down the whole tree because we got a couple bad apples on it. In other words, God is not going to toss you away just because you may have a problem that you're working with. You're working with him with it. You, you understand? You may have a problem. We all have problems. We all have problems. But see, there's a difference than when Jesus walked up to that fig tree. He's seen it afar off. And when he went over to it, all the thing was on it was leaves. It looked like it had fruit on it. In other words, it was offering up like lip service. You know how people be talking good, and but they don't be performing nothing. They just be talking something. And it produces nothing. <laughs> what they're talking. You understand what I'm saying? Amen. But Jesus, he hewed that whole tree down. That's right. yeah. Because it wasn't producing anything. Nothing. Okay, let me move on. Thank you, Jesus. A good tree cannot bring forth evil fruit. Neither can a corrupt tree bring forth good fruit. Jesus said that you should know them by the fruit they bring forth. Yeah. Lip service bringing forth no fruit or, or it brings forth evil fruit yeah. because it's just empty words yeah, right. Yeah, that's right. to the person speaking them and planting those seeds. It's just empty words. The seed uh, uh, that you sow with lip service would not produce anything. If it does, it, 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 it produces nothing good Romans 7 and 8 says nothing good dwelleth in my flesh and this is where lip service derives from lip service derives from your flesh and it operates in the flesh it's kind of like I, I was talking to uh, uh, someone I don't know uh, maybe a couple of weeks ago and I was talking about watermelons and how about watermelons grow. And I was talking about uh, how there, there are some melons that would grow at the end of a field. See, I was born and raised in the country, it's about 100 miles from here. And at the end of the field, there would be watermelons that would grow and you ain't even have to plant them. And even on the side of the road, there would be watermelons growing that you didn't have to plant. And I was telling them how we used to laugh. Y'all excuse me now. We used to laugh at the people that came from up north, right? <laughs> on the road because they would stop along the road and pick these watermelons. And in actuality, these watermelons wasn't really watermelons. They looked just like a watermelon though. <laughs> right. But there was what we call in the country, I don't even know if it's in the uh, uh, dictionary somewhere. We used to call them sitlins, sitlins. And, and 
if you cut that cylinder open, it looks just like a watermelon. But it's like a green rhyme all the way through. It's good for nothing. Because what we used to laugh at was when the northerns get to wherever they was going to Florida, I guess, when they cut that cylinder open, they found it wasn't nothing but like rhyme all the way through, like a watermelon rhyme. And I know they were so disappointed. It's, what I'm saying is, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. Those siblings were good for nothing but to throw to the swine, to the hogs. They was good, that was good for nothing. You couldn't eat them things. If you ate them, they'd probably make you sick. And lip service is good for nothing but they be tossed to the swines. If you receive it, it'll kill your spirit because it's empty. It produces no food for the soul. So your soul would die if you keep trying to feed yourself off of lip service. You need to know what you're eating. Good holy food, not evil food. Something that goes to something that goes in you to give you life. Yeah. Something that goes in you not to give you death. You need to know what you're eating and where you're eating from. Man, uh, in Proverbs, it, it says that death and life is in the power of the tongue. What you are speaking, what you are, 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 are listening to, who you're listening to, uh, uh, someone that has you know, are you listening to somebody that have your best interest? Are you listening to somebody that have their own interests? Think about that thing now. Who are you listening to? What interest are they bearing for you? Are you getting anything out of it? Are you being blessed by their conversation? Are you being blessed by what they're speaking? Are they taking nothing but a uh, 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 life away from you? Jesus. Sucking you dry. That's what weeds will do to a good plant. Jesus. Weeds will wrap around a good plant and it'll suck it dry. Jesus. Think about it. Amen. Let me move on. Remember, they may be talking a good conversation, just like that fig tree was looking good with them leaves on it. But when Jesus got up to it, it wasn't bearing no fruit. Hallelujah. It was bringing forth nothing. Hallelujah. Some people be talking a good conversation, but they ain't bringing nothing to your life. They subtracting away. The, the, the scripture goes on and says, every tree that bringeth not forth good fruit is hewed down and cast into the fire. If that person don't have, a, have your best interest in, at heart, Hew, 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 hew that relationship down. Amen. Cut that relationship. If they ain't got your best interest at heart, that means it's the opposite thing there. If they ain't got your best interest at heart, then they got a, a, a negative impact on you. Amen. They try to bring you down. Yes. Amen. Amen. That's the job of the devil, to bring you down. Yeah. Don't get cast into the fire with the devil. The word goes on and says, uh, 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 Wherefore, by their fruit, ye should be known of them. In other words, you are known, man. You are known. Jesus said that you should know them that, that are speaking lip service. How are you going to know this? How is this done? You see, there's true uh, uh, there, there's a you will see their true attitude will be revealed or their true heart will be revealed or the intentions of their heart will be revealed or exposed how is this done Luke 12 and 1 says in the meantime when they were gathered together an innumerable multiple, multitude of people in so, in, in so much that they trotted on one another. It began to say, uh, he began to say unto his disciples, first of all, beware ye of the loathing of the Pharisees, which is hypocrites, 
or hypocrisy. For there is nothing covered that shall not be revealed, neither hid that shall not uh, be known. Uh, therefore, whatsoever ye, shall, ye have spoken in the darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in the closet shall be proclaimed upon the rooftops of the housetop. Listen, when you speak lip service, you're speaking in darkness. And darkness, you're working in it when you're speaking lip service. Listen, when you, when you hear a lip service spoken, it's in darkness. Let the light of God shine down and burn that lip service up. Uh, Jeremiah 31 and 3 says, The Lord had appeared of old unto me, saying, Yea, I have loved thee with an everlasting love. Therefore, with loving kindness have I drawn thee. Jesus says, With loving kindness have I drawn thee. Love comes from the heart. Love is an action word. My wife and I, I, I sometimes have some disagreements about our love. Okay, let's be real. Sometimes we have some arguments about our love, our love for each other. I often tell her uh, that I love her, but sometimes I, I don't always show that in my actions, according to my wife. Some of the things that I, I do in our relationship sometimes don't line up with the things that I'm saying. Which I'm saying, I love you. Amen? Now, this is what? This is lip service. Because I, if I ain't doing what I'm saying, or it's being hypocritical, or, or being a hypocrite, because you must do what you're saying. Amen? Or what you're speaking. Or, or, or it don't matter. E either one of them words are fit. You can pick out the one that, that sounds the least, uh, 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 I guess the least, the not, don't, don't sound the worst. I would ask the question, have you ever been there? Uh, I, I would ask the question, have you ever been there? Where well, words, where well, your words don't quite line up with your actions. I said I would ask the question. I'm not the Hallelujah. I don't want you to, I don't want to put you in a position to lie. Okay, right. Somebody say, thank you, Jesus. Okay. We don't want to do that to you. You see, it's hard for something or for somebody to admit that they're wrong about something, especially those that are walking in hypocrisy. I said I wouldn't ask the question. I'm not. Because you may be sitting beside your spouse right there on the sofa or right at the table. And I don't want y'all to start pointing fingers at each other and get in an argument. Don't you know that Jesus uh, uh, is going to be, hallelujah, are you going to be Jesus, the bride of Jesus? Are you married to Jesus? Do you love him? You said that you do. I love him. Show him by more than just saying, Jesus, I love you. We, do, we need to do more than just uh, uh, sing that song. Wait a minute. I love you, Jesus. I worship and adore you. Just want to tell you, Lord, I love you more than anything. Y'all know the song. Uh, no, that's why I, I need to end it right there. Like, as they say, I need to keep my day job. <laughs> Hallelujah. But you get my idea. Amen. You need to do more yes, than just sing that song. Yes. You need to walk in that thing. Yes. Jesus said in John 14, if you love me, keep my commandments. Yes. Listen, I know uh, that I'm not going to uh, be perfect in my marriage. But I know that I can do better than what I'm doing at this moment. Amen. Don't be 
uh, you know, looking at me like that, hallelujah, like something is wrong with me. There's nothing wrong with me. That's what's wrong, hallelujah, with a lot of us today. You see, we, as Christians, we walk around like we don't have any problems. Like we, like we ain't got no problems in this world. We all have the same problems almost. Amen. The difference is, is how we handle them. Yeah. Yeah. How we work those problems out. Yeah. Yeah. Whether we're working them out in the flesh or whether we're working them out in the spirit, yeah. that determines your victory. That's right. That determines what's going to be your victory. Yeah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Jesus knows that you're not going to be perfect in your relationship with him. But let me ask you, can you do better than what you're doing? Yeah. Can you step the game up a little bit? Oh, yeah. Hallelujah. Can you do better, hallelujah, than what you're doing right now? Yes, Lord. Can you follow through with some of those things when you say, I love you? Like I was saying, I know I need to step up a little bit in my own relationship with my wife. I'm saying I love you. If you're telling Jesus you love him, then you need to step it up. Yeah. Hallelujah. Follow through when you tell Jesus, Lord, I'm going to fast. Hallelujah on such and such day. Lord, I, I'm going I'm to I'm get down and pray. Lord, I'm, I'm, I'm finna I'm finna read and read and, and study your word. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Do them things. Create that relationship. Build that relationship with Jesus. Yeah. Yeah. Can you follow through with it? Hallelujah. Yeah. Thank you, Jesus. When people are in a dark place and they are lost, and when they are, when they see a, a, a light, they go towards that light. Those that, that, that want to be found. Now, those that want to be found, if somebody is in darkness, if, if, if I cut all the lights out in this building and the only thing you see is the light over there, you're going to go towards that way. You ain't going to walk into the dark place of it. You walk, you walk to the light. Because you won't, you know, normally a light says an entrance. And an entrance is a way out. Hallelujah. So you want to come out of the darkness. And when you see light, you go to the light to get out of the darkness. Hallelujah. Now, you, you, you always, though, have this certain group that just love the darkness. And when they see the light, they run the other way. Because light exposes things. Light exposes things. Ephesians 5 and 11 says, Take no part in the worthless deeds of evil and darkness. Instead, expose them. It is shameful even to talk about the things that, that the ungodly people do in secret. Uh, they, uh, it, it almost is not in secret today. Everything seems to be ungodly, it just open. But anyway... But their evil intentions will be exposed when the light shines on them. For the light makes everything visible. This is why it says, Awake, O sleepers. Rise up from the dead, and Christ will give you light. You see, God light exposes lip service. He said, If you rise from up from the dead, he will give you light that exposes darkness and the things that is done in the darkness. How do you rise up from the dead and get that light? By going down in Jesus' name in the water baptism and receiving the gift of the Holy Ghost. By this you can, you can have the, 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 that penetrating light of Jesus Christ. How many people ever uh, 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 oh, 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 oh. How many other people, let me look at the camera. How many people ever had some roaches in their house <laughs> or in their apartment? And you turn on the light and they run for the darkness. They run for cover. <laughs> yeah. That is why uh, 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 people sometimes don't want to talk with you. 
because you have that exposing, penetrating light of Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Psalms uh, 68 says, let God arise and his enemies be scattered. That's what happened when that light come on, them brooches come on. They be scattered. <laughs> Hallelujah. It said, let them also that hate him flee before him. As smoke is driven away, so drives away them away. As white melted before the fire, so let the wicked perish in the presence of God. Woo! Hallelujah. But let the righteous be glad. Yeah. Let the righteous be glad. Let them rejoice before God. Yeah. Let them be exceedingly joy, uh, glad. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. They don't want to talk with you. Now, they don't want to talk with you because you're shining with that light of Jesus. And they're, they're, they're scared of you. Because you might expose them in their lip service. Like Jesus did the scribes and the Pharisees. That's if you're walking in the light, the love of Jesus Christ. Now, some people... They be running because running from you because you just be talking crazy. <laughs> you ain't got no light. You just be talking crazy and be talking negative and talking nothing good. So they see you coming, they be like, oh Jesus, let me go. They ain't running from you because you want to expose them from the light. They just running for you. Or, or you may be as the, the, the fellows say out on the street. You ain't talking about nothing. You ain't talking, uh, 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 they say, you ain't talking nothing but a lot of nothing. A lot of talk. That's what, that's what you are. Lip service. That's what they be saying. Lip service. You ain't talking about nothing. Have you ever gone to wonder why? You go into uh, some restaurants around town and, and it be so dark in the restaurant you can't even read the menu. You be trying to read the menu, and it's so dark up in there. And you know they be, they, you know they they, they say it as it's because you know they want to make it romantic and and that type of stuff. Well, okay, <laughs> but uh, you see, if they flip on the light or turn the lights up, it would be exposed to filthiness yeah. in them restaurant. Amen. How filthy it is and. How filthy are what you're sitting down and eating in. This is what happens sometimes when we engage in a conversation with somebody who's walking in the light. You become exposed beyond your lip service. And the filthiness of your heart begin to show through. The light of Jesus shines through the lip service and directly into the heart. Where the truth of you lies and, and where the truth of the matter is. 2 Corinthians, 4 and, uh, 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 2 Corinthians 4 and 6 says, For God said, who said, Let there be light in the darkness, has made his light shine in our heart, so we can know the glory of God that is the glory of God that is seen in the face of Jesus Christ. This is part of of that discerning power that God has given us. When someone speak, shine that glory of light upon them and find out whether it's true or not, what they're saying. Jesus knows what lies in us. He knows the truth about us. He knows uh, your lips are, or if your lips are lining up with your heart. He knows your lips are, are, are whether your, your mind and your head and, he knows whether you are speaking something opposite of what you have in your heart. Jesus knows those things. Psalms uh, 119 says in 11, The word have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against thee. That hidden word in your heart shines through. When you have the light of Jesus shining fully through you, it will burn down lip service. It will burn it down. Hallelujah. It will cause your walk, your talk, your speech to be the same in Jesus' name. 
it will all line up. Daniel 2 and uh, uh, 22 says, he revealed, revealed the deep and secret thing. He knows what is in the darkness and the light dwelleth with him. Jesus knows, hallelujah, what you have hidden in your heart. He knows, hallelujah, what's down in there. His light exposes it. You can't hide it. When, 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 when Jesus searches your heart, he should find nothing but what we was talking about in Psalm 119. That word should be hidden in your heart. Hallelujah. He should find that word and his love deep down in his heart. Proverbs uh, 20 and 27 said, The spirit of a man is the lamp of the Lord, searching all the inner depth of his heart. See, see, in the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and was God. And in Him was life, eternal life. God has given to all who believe in Jesus Christ His own life. Ah, oh, yes, He did. And life more abundantly. And He who has, the, uh, and He, hallelujah, and He who has the Son has the life of Christ within him. And that life of Christ is the light of men that shineth in our heart, searching the innermost parts of our being. Hallelujah. Psalms 139 and 23 says, Search me, O God, and know my heart. Try me and know my thoughts. Yes. And see if there be any wicked way Hallelujah, in me. And lead me in the way of everlasting. Hallelujah. Think about this thing now as I bring it to a close. Let Jesus search your heart. Yes. Let Jesus search your heart. Yes. Hallelujah. Let the light of God search you out. In verse 24, it says, that if you find any wicked way in me, lead me to the way of everlasting. Yeah. And you know what that way of everlasting is? It's the way of repentance and forgiveness. Listen, uh, uh, for us to, to be used by God effectively, we should become, hallelujah, uh, we should be welcoming him into our inner being and, and submitting willingly to him to search us out. Search our hearts out. Hallelujah. Search our thoughts out. Search our secret motives out. Yes. Oh, God. Hallelujah. Who's going to invite God in to do that? Jesus. My God. So that we may be beneficial vessels to be used by God. Yes. That's the only way we can, you know, we can be used. It, he ain't saying that you got to be perfect. But your intentions have to be right. Because we all are not going to be perfect. Hallelujah. But you must have some intention in your heart. Hallelujah. That you're searching for God and more and more and more and more of him. Listen, I'm not trying to beat you down with the word. I ain't trying to beat nobody down with the word of God. I'm trying to help us. I'm trying to help us. Hallelujah. I'm trying to help all of us. Even Peter, Peter now, we know Peter. Even Peter was a hypocrite at some points in time in his life. When you glance through the life of Peter. Uh, once Peter, in, in one instance, Peter, uh, he was like a reverse lip service. Because when he was asked, do you know Jesus? And they, he was like, no. Now you know in Peter's heart, how much he loved Jesus. But yet, his lips were saying, no, I don't know him. Then he started cussing him. Cussing, he was cussing him uh, of how bad he don't want to know Jesus. But his heart was saying, oh, oh Lord, I know. He, he ooh, messed him up. In other words, he was, that was hypocrisy. That was lip service. Because 
his heart and his lips wasn't lining up. Because in, in Peter's heart was goodness, was love for Jesus. But his lips were speaking hatred for him at that moment and at that time. Amen? It happens to us all. The next time you find Peter, he was being uh, uh, he was being hypocritical because he refused to eat with the Gentiles. And what happened was uh, in Galatians two, it says Galatians two and twelve. It says when he first arrived, he ate with the Gentile believers. Now, when he first arrived to the camp, he ate with the Gentile believers who were not circumcised. But afterwards, when some of, when some friends of James came, Peter wouldn't eat with the Gentiles anymore. He was afraid of the, uh, of the criticism from these people who insisted on the necessity of circumcision. As a result, other Jewish believers followed Peter, hypocrisy. And even Barabbas was led astray by the hypocrisy that Peter done. In other words, listen, we can fall to it, but we must rise from it. Yes. We must rise from it. Yes. You feel ashamed. I feel ashamed. Yes. We're ashamed of our behavior from being uh, from being a, um, a hypocrite or, or, or being in hypocrisy. Isaiah 15 and 7 says, though, because the sovereign Lord helps me, I will not be disgraced. That's right. Yes, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Therefore, I have set my face like a stone, yes. determined to do his will. Amen. Other words, I'm in repentance. Lord, I have done wrong. Yes. Lord, I'm going to do right. He said that I set my face like a stone. A stone don't move unless you move it. I set my, other words, God, I'm going to follow you. And the last of it says, and I know that I will not be put to shame. Other words, God will turn your shameness that you feel, and you should be feeling it if you've uh, uh, been in hypocrisy. Hallelujah. It should bring you to repentance. That's right. And when you repent, Lord, forgive me for what I have done. Amen. He'll turn that shame into joy, yes. into happiness, yes. into strength. Yes. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. He'll give you peace. You. Hallelujah. This is what I'm talking about. My God, everybody stand. Thank you. Jesus will turn that thing around. Hallelujah. Don't let the devil keep you down like that. Hallelujah. Every, every, everybody. Hallelujah. On uh, um, Online on Facebook and on uh, uh, YouTube and the other platform, media platform. Hallelujah. I want you all to stand also. Right where you are. Hallelujah. Stand. We're going to pray. Lord, hallelujah. Everybody, heads down and eyes closed. Heads bowed. Lord, hallelujah, Lord. Help us, Lord. Lord, I, I pray, Lord, that you would help us to stop pretending to be something that we're not. Help us, Lord. God, that you would that you would come in, God, and strengthen us and give us strength, God, to walk up right. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Come and search us, God. Search our heart, God. Hallelujah, God. Cause change to come to our heart. Bring us to a state of repentance, God. God, forgive me of my sin. Forgive me, God, for, 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 being, for walking in hypocrisy. Forgive me for lip service, God. Forgive me, God. Come and search me out, God. Search us out, God. Hallelujah. Search us, God. 
shine your light upon us. Penetrate our hearts. Penetrate our mind, our thoughts. See God. See God. Where we need to make a change. And God, bring that change, that thought of it. Bring the knowledge of it to us. Bring it forth in our lives. Oh, Lord. Remove, God, those things that hinder us. Give us strength right now to make a change. My Lord, give us strength to make that change, God. Woo, we want to make it, God. God, we want to come to you. We want to make the change, oh, Lord. Strengthen us right now, that birthing strength, to make that change, Lord. We're going to birth out something, God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A walk with you. We're going to hold our face like stone. We're going to walk like stone. We're going to move forward, God. We're going to stand. We're going to be steadfast in you, God. Help us, God, to make this change. We love you, God, and we want to show you that we love you. We thank you and we praise you. Hallelujah. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. Thank you, God. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus.